Hi everyone, welcome. It's Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern, so it's time for Stamping with Denise. It's good to be back with you this week. Um, some technical difficulties, so no face, just my work area. Um, a little bit of housekeeping, as you know. If you like my video, please share my video and comment share down in the comments. And then your name is entered to possibly win the project I work on tonight. Um, if you call last week, I made three different cards, all kind of featuring designer series paper. Um, none of them extremely difficult. And because she shared and she commented, Martha Roberts is going to get one of these cards. Martha, let me know which card you want and I'll get that out to you in the mail this week. Um, if you can't share my video, I understand. Please give my video some hearts. Facebook likes the hearts better than the thumbs up. It's better for the algorithm. If you're watching on YouTube, welcome. Um, if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to my channel and then click that little blue bell and you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video. And did you guys realize Christmas is one month from today? Who's ready? I'm not. I've only bought one Christmas present and I have one other that I'm considering. But I don't have a lot of people to buy for, so it's okay. So tonight I thought I'd share with you this cute Christmas card. Super simple, easy to make. And look at this detail, this lined detail on here. Um, I'm going to show you how to do that. It's super simple. But this uses the... Humble Home Bundle. It, the punch and the stamp set. So we will be using it to make this card tonight. I'll be using the two and three eighths inch punch for the circle that the house is on. And um, my trimmer. But I think what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get started here start putting this all together and I'll show you how simple it is this is a this is a card you could make a lot of in a pretty short period of time let me see if I can put that there we go that keeps it closed okay so let me start with the base this is smoky slate it's eight and a half by five and a half folded in half although this size does not look right hold on Eight and a half. Wait a minute. This is not appropriate. This is not the right size. Let me get another piece. Hang on. I think I just grabbed a piece out of my filing cabinet and didn't pay much attention and it just kind of assumed it was right. So we're going to cut this down. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece of smoky slate. We are gonna cut this in half at five and a half, right there. Yep, it was not the right piece, the right size. So I could have made it work, but that's okay. We'll just get another piece, it's only paper. Now, this is eight and a half by five and a half. We are gonna fold this in half. And where's my bone folder? Put this right here. Perfect. Okay, set that off to the side. Now I have a piece of white, basic white, excuse me, and this is three and a quarter by four and three quarters. And I'm gonna show you how to get these, can you see them, the scored lines on there? Just add some little bit more texture and interest to the card, to what's a pretty simple card. Um, so on these, on this card, I put the I put it so that the mountain part of the score is down. This time I'm going to try, if I turn the paper the right way, do it so that the um, mountain part, the bumpy part, is on the front side and see if we notice any real difference. I don't know if we're going to, but we will, um, we will see. Okay, so I want to, 
I want my lines to go from this way to this way, but because I want the bumpy part on this side, I'm going to have to turn it over and we will work here. Okay, let me do this. So you can do this if you have the bit, the scoring board, the Stampin' Up! scoring board, you can certainly do that. Um, but you don't have to, and I'm going to show you how to do it here with your trimmer. So wherever you want your score line, I'll be honest here, let's, let's start out right here. Just, this is an inch and a half down from the or an inch and a half from the corner, okay? Which is probably about what that one is. So I'm gonna get my cutting blade out of the way. Now we're gonna use our scoring tool right there. Now, these are gonna be quarter inch lines. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move this down. I've still got my corner on that line. And if you see, I've lined up right there this is the score I just did, so I know that it's going to be straight, and I will just keep doing that until I get the number of lines that I want. Let's see how many I put in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I put nine. I'm going to make those a little bit darker. I'm going to go back up here. Okay, I did that one, so we're going to go down one more. I know they're hard for you to see. And I'm going to move this over here because this is the end of my last score line, and this is the end of it, and I, I want to make sure that it's lined up. I'm going to go down another quarter inch, make sure those are lined up. Let me do this here. Um, a little bit. There we go. See how that looks. I'm gonna do a couple more. So the biggest measurement is just, or the biggest thing you're gonna do is your last score line, you wanna line it up with the top line there on your um, trimmer. Let's do one more. Lined up, lined up. And there we are. Can you see those? I like those. I think they look, and they're a fun way to add detail to your car. I did, I did videos, gosh, it's been a couple years where I did a lot of things where I did them. I used the scoreboard, scoring board, and I, I made it go diagonal both ways. So it kind of looked like um, it was tufted. We had, it used to have an old um, embossing folder called tufted that looked a lot like that. So while we're on this piece, I am going to go ahead and use my Memento Black ink, and I am going to stamp my Merry Christmas down here in the corner. Perfect. Yes. And this is just super simple, easy to do. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to put that there for now. Oops, I need this. So this is the piece we're going to stamp on and all of that. So let's start with the cherry cobbler for the brick part of the house. Oh, I wanna make sure I get that. Make sure you get it all inked up really well. I'm gonna put it right about there. The nice thing with the photopolymer stamps is you can make sure you've evenly stamped it. Look at that, how nice that is. Okay, let's see, I don't think I need that for anything else. So we'll set this off to the side. Um, okay, now we're gonna use basic gray for a couple of items. We're gonna use that for the roof. Um, 
me see here. Oops, I don't have that completely covered. There we go. Uh, the house is, uh, the roof's, it's, we're raising the roof a little bit. We're having a party. Yay, yay, yay. That's okay. That works still. Has a kind of an odd angle. Let me see if I can try it again just out of curiosity here. So let's go back to this one here. Let's see if I can get a better. It's not terrible, but we can try to do better. And it's only paper and ink. Okay, let's close that cherry cobbler again. I'll go back to the basic gray. And again, if I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to get this lined up a little bit better and sorry if I'm gonna be off camera for just a minute, but it helps to be right above it. Still didn't quite get it, but it's a little better. Okay, good enough. Um, I'm gonna get the Humble Home Punch, which is super nice. Because I can just punch the whole house out. The other thing you could do is punch the house out first and then stamp. There we go. I got little pieces going other places. Okay. So, there's my house. Um, let me get the doors and windows. See, those are on a separate block, or on a separate um, stamp right here. And now you can either, you can cut those out, which is probably the, you know, just freehand, which is probably the easiest, but you can stamp, you can cut the windows out here, but not the door. So, I don't know. I would probably just I'm going to just do it. Well, you know what I'll do here? Let's try this. Let's cut the door out. Okay, there's one door. Let's see how it works with the I've always just kind of cut them uh, out. I better do this first. These builder punches, you always have to be a little careful because there's other things that will punch out of your paper. There we go. Whoops. There's one. And another one. Good. There's that. And then the last thing we have to stamp is our wreath. Okay. Let me just, again, get the black out. Memento black. I'm going to do a mistake right in here. And we are going to use the... Stampin' Right markers. These are not the alcohol blends. These are regular markers in real red and garden green, and we are going to fill these in. Now, Stampin' Up, the, this year, last year, recently redesigned their markers. They've always had this paintbrush in that I'm using here for the green, but I'll show you here the other end. Because I'm going to use that for the red, but it's nice. There used to be issues with them drying out, but these seem to be doing great, and I'm loving this. So again, I'm just coloring the um, bow in. This is a nice, sturdy point. Doesn't seem to 
be drying out. I've not had any issues with any of these. Now remember, whenever you have a marker that has both ends on it, you want to store it horizontally. You don't want to store it in a pencil holder like that. You want to store it horizontally, sorry, so that you have um, ink equally distributed in both ends. <coughs> I've still got a little bit of a, that cold, the remnants of the cold I had last week. So then we're going to fussy cut that um, little wreath out, but I already did one, so it's there. And let's see, we can get pretty darn close here to assembling this. I'm gonna start out first here. I'm gonna put, we had a couple more things we need, but um, we'll put this down flat. You know, when I have a card, I like to only have one layer of dimensionals, otherwise it tends to get too, too thick to mail. So um, you could put this one on dimensionals. You could put the circle here on dimensionals. You could put a house on dimensionals. It doesn't really make much difference. Here, let me get my reverse tweezers here. So it just helps me place it right and it keeps my fat fingers out of the way so I can get a good view of where I want it. There we go. There's that. Put a little bit of this on there. On this window. And a little bit of adhesive on this window. Now you could use your Tombow glue or whatever for this. You could even use a glue dot for these little windows. But I think that they're super cute. Okay, and this you could put on a dimensional. But again, because I like to keep only one layer of dimensionals, I think I'm gonna raise the circle up on a dimensional. But there's lots of possibilities. Now if that's not an issue for you and you don't mind, then go ahead and raise whatever you want. Okay, I need a piece of white. I had some pieces here. Oh, let me see here. <clears throat> Get a piece of, see, will this scrap work? Is this big enough? Hey, that'll work. Okay, good. I have a basket with scraps of white and very vanilla in it, so I try to use those up before I cut. I use a new piece. Um... Okay, so this is the two and three eighths inch circle punch. Very, very helpful. Okay, and it, it's nice because this is something you can do. Don't need a die cutting machine. You can just um, don't need a lot of tools. Just some basics. Okay, and where is the? Let's see here. I've got some of these. using the edges of my dimensionals. Again, I haven't really started on my own Christmas cards. I'm just procrastinating. I think since I'm retired, I'm like, eh, I got tomorrow. Okay, let's put this over here. See our, I don't know if you can tell, but this, the lines that I made are on this side. I'll put this right there. That looks so nice. And then the only thing I need is my little bow. And this is using the, I used this last week, Real Red and White Baker's Twine. Okay. Again, let's do a, let's see, do I have a double bow? Yep, I like a double bow because you know what? It just makes it a little bit more robust, but it doesn't really add any bulk to your card. So, especially with Baker's Twine because it's, it is thin. Okay, so you know, the way I, I use the bunny ears. So I've just made two loops of the um, Baker's Twine. And even though I have two thicknesses, treat them as one, okay, when you're doing this. Now you're just going to tie these together. Okay, 
and make sure you get both pieces of that loop and you're going to pull it together or pull it through. Now what confuses some, some people is this extra loop here. And this extra loop is going to become your tails on the other side. So the other thing I learned when tying um, Baker's twine is not to roll roll it. Um, you know, Baker's twine kind of can lend itself to you know, being rolled and then that makes your loops twist and it just becomes a, it's hard to get the loop on your untwisted. So um, let's put this, I just got a little glue dot. I balled it up here. I'm going to put this right here. And there we go. Our card is done. A super simple Merry Christmas Christmas card using the Humble Home bundle. I hope you like this. Let me know and please um, share my video and this might be coming your way next week. Everybody, thank you so much and I will see you next Monday evening for Stamping with Denise. Bye now.